heard of a person called Nostradamus. Nostradamus was some guy in the 16, 17, 1800s, whatever, that apparently wrote down a load of prophecies and said, right, this is what's going to happen in the future. Friend, well, I want to tell you, between 800 and 4,000 years before Jesus came, 33 prophecies were written down on paper concerning the last 24 hours of Jesus' life. If the chances of winning the lottery is 1 in 14 million, then what is the chances of all these different people writing down all these different prophecies between 800 and 4,000 years before Jesus coming and it coming to pass? You know, I'm going to give you a very big number. It's 1 in a no million. Imagine now, what in your mind, you've got the number one, and now put 17 zeros after that number one. That is a huge number. That is huge. You would say, that is impossible. That is impossible for many people just to guess it and get it right. But, but these prophecies would be like, oh, that they would give him wine to drink on the cross. I mean, who would know that? God would know that and write it down. So this is just concerning the last 24 hours of Jesus' life. There's over 800 prophecies in the Bible concerning Jesus and that every one of them has come to pass, except just a few that are yet to happen. And that concerns the return of Jesus. And I want to know, friend, are you ready? Are you ready for the King to come? Because Jesus is coming back. And he's not coming back as a baby in a manger. You know, we're not going to go down the local church and sing Christmas carols and go, Oh, silent night. You can tell I'm not a singer, can't you? I mean, but maybe you're a good singer. Or maybe you're a good singer, but I definitely can't sing. But friend, but one thing that I know is that Jesus is coming back. And we are going to be required to give an account of our lives. You know, he's going to say, Bob, what about this life that I've given you? Bill, what about, what did you do with it? What, the, the most important question, what did you do with my son Jesus? Did you, re did you receive him as your saviour? Or did you reject him and cast him to the side? You know, Jesus said, if any man is ashamed of me and ashamed of my words, I will be ashamed of him before the Father. You know, I don't want that so to be me. And, and you don't have to um, stand up here and talk about Jesus, whatever. But friend, what will you do? I was watching this health and safety meeting at work. And in this health and safety video that we was watching, it involved a petrol tanker. You know what, I don't know if you know, but petrol some of the most dangerous stuff on the planet. And this petrol tanker was on its side and it was in Pakistan. And there was 169 people with buckets and containers getting this free petrol that had poured out of the, uh, of the trailer. For them it was like Christmas. For them it was like money from heaven. They got these buckets and they came down and they got the fuel. And, and they had in their mind that they was going to sell it. Suddenly, somebody smoking walked past and the whole lot went up. And it's on, on, uh, it's on YouTube where you can watch it. One minute, they're collecting this free fuel, this free money. And the next, this petrol tank has exploded, taking 169 people. But maybe they had plans that night. Maybe they was going to a party. Maybe they was going to go and sell the free petrol that they're taking. But, but then they were transported and they had to give an account of their life before God. You know, friend, I hope that I'm here tomorrow. Is there anyone else that hopes that they're still alive tomorrow? No, but nobody else hopes that they're alive tomorrow. Really? Really? Is it because I'm a southerner? Is it because nobody knows that they Is it because what anyone knows whether they're here or not? The friend is, is that we don't know. And I had a life insurance person phone me up on the phone. Do you get these annoying calls while they phone up? Hello, sir. Have you got life insurance? 
Now, thankfully, my wife is pleased. I have got life insurance. So if one of you was to come and kill me, then I would be covered, no problem. She'd go, she'd take the money, she'd make the phone call, she'd claim the insurance. But friend, what about your eternal life? Have you made eternal life insurance? Here we're just like a vapour. We was reading the other day about the breath of man is just like a vapour at best. That's what we are. We're a vapour at best. I mean, some of us might think we're famous, some of us want to be a big shot, but friend, really, we're a vapour at best. How are you going to appear before God? Are you going to say, Jesus, you washed me clean and I'm so grateful. You know, the blood of Jesus Christ was shed for your sin. That's why he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. No one. I mean, but I've heard these arguments before. Oh, there's many roads that lead to Rome. No, it doesn't. I'm driving up the M6 later that goes to Scotland, and that does not lead to Rome. I can tell you that. If I go much further, I'll end up in the North Sea. Oh, there's many different religions. Yeah, there are, but only one. But only one sent his son, Jesus Christ, because he loved us so much. What have you done in the name of love? You know what? I can remember being so in love with a girl, wife, close your ears now, that I would walk eight miles there and back to go and see this girl. Eight miles on my foot I would walk because I was in love with this girl. I would walk there and walk back. Friend, God was so in love with you that he didn't walk eight miles. God was so in love with you that he took the best of what he had. He took his own son and sent him to earth in a human body to pay the price for my sin and for your sin. Just think about that. That's why Jesus is the way. Because nobody else did God send. Nobody else was sent to be the sacrifice. And salvation is a free gift. Many of us think, if we do good, then I might make it into heaven. If I do a good thing, if I do more good than bad and I'm wailed on the scales of life, then hopefully my good will outweigh my bad. Friend, I want to tell you that there's no scales in heaven. There's absolutely no scales. There's just loving arms as a father, just waiting to receive those that, that have received Jesus as their saviour. You know, salvation is free, it can't be earned. The Bible says that no one has done good, not one. Who thinks that they're a good person? Who thinks that they're a good person? Oh, look at that, I've got no money. I was going to go, oh, yes I have. Look at this. Right, I've got a five pound note. Who wants five pounds? Who wants five pounds? Okay, so, so come and talk to me. Have you ever taken the name of the Lord in vain? Ever said, oh my G-O-D or 
You know what? People think that God sends them to hell. But the Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that, ever, so that whoever should believe in him should not perish but have an everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world because they were condemned already. That's why we need saving. That's why we need a saviour. If we was on an aeroplane right now and the captain gave out a message, hello, this is your captain speaking. We are at 30,000 feet. The plane is breaking up. There is a parachute under your seat. You would reach for that parachute as quick as you can, wouldn't you? You would reach for the parachute because you know that you're going to jump. Friend, I want to tell you that there's a jump coming. I want to tell you that you're going to appear before God and you're going to give an account for your life. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ like a parachute and depend and trust in him today. You're up, mate.